What's up guys, this is Erkin from HDD Recovery Services. Today I will be performing a repair on a flash drive that was sent to me by Make-A-Wish Foundation. I really want to help these guys out, so let's see if we can do that. Now, uh, the uh, unit that was sent in on Friday to us uh, came in and it had a broken connector. We repaired the connector, but that still did not fix the issue. The drive would not get recognized. And uh, I'm not sure what, what exactly went wrong, but maybe some other vital component got damaged because of that impact that caused the connector to break. Uh, bottom line is that when that happens, uh, I do have a pretty good built up solid uh, inventory of uh, donor drives that I use for memory transplants. So uh, as uh, you guys probably seen before on this channel, and I'll post a link uh, to a procedure like that that I've done in the past in the description box, um, I use donor flash drives on rare occasions where the connector repair just is not an answer it doesn't fix it doesn't solve the problem in this problem in this in this case specifically why it became a little extra um, why it became a little bit more advanced I should say is because I did not have a donor that had an exact same capacity on the same controller part number so uh, but I did have an identical board that board design looked the same. It was taken from a 16 gigabyte unit that had a different controller that had obviously different memory because it's 16 gigs instead of eight. But the board, if you look at it, they look identical. They look like twins. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and prepped them both for the transplant. So we're gonna remove the memory from uh, both of the devices. We're gonna remove controllers from both of the devices, but we're gonna mash together a unit that consists of a donor working PCB, the board is going to be from the 16 gigabyte device that I tested and it works. Uh, but the memory and the controller will come from a failed uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation flash drive. Hopefully we can restore this information for these kids. Uh, the organization does wonderful things. I really, really, really want to help them out. So let's see how this process goes. And fingers crossed, it's going to work. <laughs> This is the back side where our flash memory component is going to go. As you can see, this part right here is where the original memory chip on the donor was before. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of flux so that we can weak it out and prep it for the new component. As you can see, there is a little bit of leftover uh, solder on the pins. 
and that's inevitable if you're removing the memory so the best thing would be to just use a little bit of a wick with a soldering iron just run it across uh, these pins and uh, pick up all that excess solder to flatten out the pads on the PCB. As you can see it's pretty straightforward and simple. ground right there okay so that's good I mean we could technically go into um, a cleanup process on this but this flux is so good that it's still liquid it's not uh, cooked on and it's not really uh, thick that will potentially prevent uh, the chip from laying flat on the board so the only thing that I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna remove access solder from the pins on the actual memory chip that is important because that that um, has to be leveled and flat as well and um, I can see that there is some excess uh, solder left over from um, from during from the from the part where we remove the component from the device so I'm just going to clean up the second side as well. All right, that's good to go. And again, we could clean off that um, extra flux, but because it's still in very liquid form, uh, I don't really see any need for it. So we're gonna position the chip precisely so that all legs line up with the pads of this PCB and usually just anchor it in a couple of positions on the outside pins just to make sure that you know it sits straight and doesn't move anymore now that was a lot Okay, so now just got to add a lot of flux to this and let the soldering iron do the work. The flux that I use is made by MG Chemicals, so in case you're wondering. And uh, I worked with some pretty good fluxes in the past and I have to say I mean it might be all into the stuff that you used to work with but um, everybody almost on every forum highly recommends um, Mtech uh, for the flux brand I tried to work with Mtech flux and honestly I don't find it work as good as uh, MG chemicals at least for me that's my personal preference some of you may argue on that topic but I really like how MG Chemicals performs. It uh, doesn't burn off as easily and it doesn't kind of evaporate as easily as the MTAC does. So I'm just gonna clean up a couple of bridges here that I made. The soldering iron is um, is designed for micro soldering, so it's not the ideal thing to remove bridges with, but it does a pretty good job at it. You know, it's just um, just requires a little bit of patience. And we're almost down on this side, that's good. On this side. I wish the view from the camera was as crystal clear as it is in the eyepieces on my microscope. But...
there's still a bridge left right there I'm gonna just wick it out a little bit and another thing I wanted to mention sometimes when I'm filming I'm looking in the eyepieces and uh, in the eyepieces the field of view the actual picture of what I'm seeing is much wider than what you guys see on a screen capture and that's because of the size of the uh, sensor inside the camera um, I tried to find the best match for the same uh, width of the of the view as I'm seeing in the eyepieces but that's as close as I could could have gotten to it so it looks like we're wrapping up here and we're coming to the final stage where we're actually going to have to plug this thing in and power it on. That's the moment of truth right now. As you guys just saw, this whole thing worked out beautifully. We swapped the controller chip first onto the donor board, then we swapped the memory component onto the donor board, and the whole thing just came together as one piece. Uh, as you can see on the, scap on the capture screen, uh, we're dumping the data off of that failed device onto our local hard drive. Once that's done, we'll compress it, and I'll email that information back to uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation. I'm extremely happy that this whole thing worked out as it did, but in our case, we got lucky. The controller wasn't fried. We were able to work with it. So if you guys need data recovery from flash drives, memory cards, hard drives, what have you, feel free to contact us. The contact information is on the screen or in the description of this box. Please subscribe and like this video. It will definitely help our channel to grow, and I'll see you guys next time.